mentorship. That's what God put me on this earth to do, to help God, to help teach, to help lead. Um, I just can do it through a football avenue and I love it. All right, so we are here today with Mr. Carl Smith, head football coach of the Person High School Rockets. So we just want to get to know you a little bit better, uh, find out about more of your uh, different career accomplishments and, and personal accomplishments and the things that you've been a part of, even in your short time here in the Person County community. But we are going to start from the beginning. So we want to know about your life growing up, the different things and events and uh, circumstances that created who you are and put you on this path to coaching young men. So let's start from the beginning. Tell us about your upbringing and where you're from. OK, so I was born in North New Jersey, Essex County. Um, it's a neighborhood called The Bricks. Um, a lot of famous people came from there. Shaquille O'Neal is from the Bricks. Uh, Redman is a neighborhood in, in, in North New Jersey that's known to be very, very rough. Um, drug infested, um, poverty, violence, those type of things. Um, that's what shaped me. Um, just having to, you know, fight on the streets and being by myself a lot of the times, especially in my early years. Is, is where it kind of all started. It created an edge. It created a, a fight within me. One of the best things my parents ever did was get me out of there. You know, at the end of the day, usually, you know, people in that, in that area, people in that neighborhood, you either dead or in jail. Um, so we moved to Rocky Mount, Tarboro area of North Carolina, <clears throat> in which um, we was back and forth for a while. So I moved a lot. Never really could um, establish like roots for the most part. Um, right when I was around six or seven and we were in Tarboro, uh, I started to do Little League football and it kind of just grew from there. It was, I played all kinds of sports, but football was a uh, football was a sport that I was always naturally good at. Which is all I was it didn't matter what position I played, didn't matter the area I went to. I was always pretty good at football. Um, and it just became an escape. It became a, a place where I could be myself. I didn't have to worry about, you know, the problems that I had at home. I could just play football. My my coaches had a big impact on me. Um, they showed me a different world, they showed me a different way of thinking. They showed me what hard work looked like along with my father. They showed me what, you know, what hard work could could help you accomplish and those types of things. And so that's kind of where it started. So when I got to high school, I went to Southwest Eskimo High School. Um, when I first got there, we weren't very good. That was my freshman year and very talented, but, you know, just really wasn't that good. Didn't have a really good record. And then Coach Raymond Cobb came in my sophomore year and he changed everything. He um, he's put in place a program in which you had to work hard. You had to earn everything that you got. Um, and he did it in a way that made you feel loved, that made you want to run and run through a brick wall for him. Um, he always had our backs. He always, you know, was positive. And um, so my, my sophomore year, I started to get better. And then fast forward to my senior year, we, we broke the school record for undefeated, for an undefeated season, most consecutive career, I mean, most consecutive wins in a season. We get to the third round of the playoffs, um, and that kind of was the spark plug for what ended up being a good 10, 15 year run at Southwest Edge Cone. Um, there, I, I ended up playing fullback and linebacker. Uh, had 1,200 yards all purpose. Um, I think around 90 to 100 tackles my senior my senior year. Ended up getting recruited by a couple of different schools: um, Richmond. Um, went to Salem and then, of course, Campbell University. I went to Campbell University. Um, I could play DB or I could play running back. Um, decided to, that I really love running the ball. And so I ended up going there. All right. So tell us about your time at, at Campbell. You were four year running back at Campbell University. So tell us about those years. Well, it, 
for me, I love to tell the, the very beginning because, you know, everybody likes to skip to the end. But in the very beginning, I was fourth on the depth chart. I need, I, I wanted to come in and, and, you know, you, you, you're ready, you're excited, you got big plans and you walk in and there's three other people in front of you. And for me, it was a, it was a challenge and I accepted it immediately. I remember standing in, in the stretch lines knowing it's, it's only a matter of time. It's, this is not going to last long. And it didn't. Um, I quickly worked my way up to first on the depth chart. Um, ended up having a, a really good career. Um, close to a thousand yards my senior year. Um, very, very, very thankful, very blessed for the opportunity I got at Campbell University. Was able to travel the world, get an education, meet my now wife. You know, a lot of great things happened for me there. So, after that successful career at Campbell, earned a degree in social work, uh, what made you want to continue with football? So as soon as I got out, I got a job as a as a um, solution tech working in pharmaceuticals, making really good money. Loved it. Um, you know, I had good money, got a, got a family, you know, just living the dream, I guess. Um, but secretly, I hated it. I just I felt unfulfilled. I didn't like getting up and going to work every single day. Um, I had a, a missing, I was just missing a passion. I just had it missing. It was not there. Um, and what was missing was football. And, um, and so something, you know, made me reach out to my old high school coach and he told me he, he wouldn't mind me coming back. And I started off as an assistant linebacker coach. Um, and then it grew. I, f I felt I wasn't working anymore, you know? And so I decided to take it on as a full-time job. I, you know, went and got my teaching degree. Well, I went and got my teaching license, um, started to become a, a full-time coach, and I've been loving it ever since. So you were part of the class that kind of set off a 10-plus year run um, at Southwest Edgecombe. Yes, sir. But then you were also on the coaching staff during that run. So yes, sir. You, were, you had your hands in a lot of that success. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So to piggyback off of that, um, we – Ironically, we my senior year, we lost to Eastern Alamance. Um, we lost to them 20, 20 to 21. And I, the first time I met Kirby, we had this conversation because he remembered me. He remembered that game. Um, it was a great game. Um, and I remember them telling me, especially then, you know, how they prepped all week to be able to stop me in the counter and stop me with this. And they really didn't. It, I still ran for 250 yards and three touchdowns. I scored all the touchdowns. We we just I think we they blocked the extra point, and that's what pretty much got them to win. Um, and then once I come back, we get I, I eventually I became the defensive coordinator at Southwest Edgecombe. Um, and that year, me and Coach Cobb's son, um, Jonathan Cobb, he was the head coach. I was the defensive coordinator. We ended up going to the fourth round of the playoffs and and losing to Kinston High School to go to the state championship. Um, so I've been a part of some really successful teams. I've been to, to some, some really high places. I've seen some really low places. You know, I, I've got a, as young as I am, a lot of people bring that up, but um, I've been doing football for my whole life and I have a lot of different experiences. Yeah. So after that time there, uh, as an assistant, you started to move into and look for head coaching positions. And one of the places you applied was Person High School. That would have been around 2016, 2017. Yes, sir. So tell us about that whole pursuit of trying to find a head coaching position. Well, it, it, that, that pursuit starts with I have to reference my stop at Rocky Mount Senior High. Um, there, my mentor, Jason Battle, he helps me out a lot. Um, he, he grew me, taught me a lot. He taught me a lot about the profession, he taught me what it takes to be a good head coach, the time, the effort, the commitment, the energy that goes into it, having to balance, you know, working and family life with, you know, his three beautiful kids and his wife, who was friends of the family. Um, I had a front row seat of what it was to, to, to be all in family and, and work. And so, you know, after two or three years there, 
I felt like it was time. Um, and so, you know, I, I applied for some jobs, got a couple of different interviews, um, got accepted for, well, you know, got offered three jobs. One of them wasn't person. They um, never they never interviewed me that first time around, which I'm thankful for. Everything works out the way it's supposed to. I ended up accepting the Benefield job and I go to Benefield High School. And my first year there, we accomplished something that wasn't done in 10 years. We were county champs in which we beat Fike High School and Hunt High School, my very first year there. And we make it to the playoffs. We travel to Bartley Yancey. Um, we beat them and they had a record year that, that year as well, breaking their school record with consecutive wins. Um, and then we eventually lost to Clinton, um, a very tradition, a, a very historic program. And, and they did a great job and it was a hard fought battle. Um, a couple of the kids from that program ended up going. Um, Raekwon Bats was, you know, kind of the star of the show there. He's now at Barton House, at Barton College, excuse me. Um, doing great things and, and most of the other guys that went to UNC P um, just did really, really well. And eventually this job came open again. Um, but what sparked it was the birth of my son and my wife was breastfeeding. And I just remember seeing her, you know, 430 in the morning, you know, trying to take an hour before she has to leave um, pumping, making sure that, you know, my, my youngest son had enough milk for the day. And it it was and she was a trooper and she's as strong as they come and she never complained about it. But I knew I wasn't happy with that. I just wasn't. And she had got a job in Durham. And so she was driving an hour, 15 minutes each way every day. And I looked on the job board and person was open. And so I said, I'm, I'm going to apply for it. And I applied for it and I interviewed for it. And, you know, they they offered me the job and I talked to her about it. And she asked me, was I sure? And I told her, I think it fits better for the family. And as she always does, she supports me in every decision. But um, this particular decision wasn't necessarily just about me. Um, I felt like it was best for her career, too, and mine. And so we made the, we made the trip. We made the trip. Yeah, that's always um, we always hear about the family having to sacrifice for the coach and having to move around to follow the coach and and all of that stuff. But in this particular situation, you sacrificed for your family and you made a move uh, at the, in the early stages of your head coaching experience um, to, you know, kind of sacrifice what could have been potential in another area to see if you could restart it here in Person County to benefit your wife and benefit the family. So that's very, very uh, interesting and, and encouraging to hear. Um, so, you, you were able to get the position at Person High School in 2021. Yes, sir. Um, that first year, you all went two and eight. Yes, sir. So tell me about the growing pains. Yeah. So we look back on it and talk about it quite often in the locker room. Just because those guys on that two and eight season, they were sophomores. And majority of them had to play. Um, we, walk, we walked into a situation where... Right after COVID, you, you got a group of kids that are now being asked to play varsity level football and never had to, or at least not in the last two or three years. Um, that was a, the, the COVID shortened season. That was a senior heavy team. So those guys carried the torch for the most part. Then the following year, once I come in, you know, you got the juniors that are now seniors. They didn't have to play their junior year because they had the other seniors. And then you got the sophomores. Those sophomores were freshmen. Well, we didn't have a we didn't have a JV season that year um, because of COVID and and just the uh, you know battling through the illnesses and, and stuff like that. And then you got the freshmen who were who were at the time in middle school. There was no middle school season, and so you have you know a group of kids that hadn't played much football, and you got a new coach that with a new offense and a new defense, and more importantly, a new way of thinking and. That first year was rough for them to understand. It was for, it was rough for them to pick up. You know, you got you got a coach that preaches hard work and discipline and structure um, and commitment, and those things wasn't wasn't really embedded into the program. Um, and so we we struggled, and some kids didn't make it. That was the biggest one. Um, having to part ways with great kids, um, having to watch kids kind of, you know, get lost to the streets or lost to bad, bad 
behavior and bad habits and just, you know, that, that type of thing. That was the struggle. That was the difficult part of it. Um, going forward with it to this point, there was beauty in it. Um, now you got a group of kids that witnessed firsthand their growth, witnessed the work that they put in to achieve what they've been able to achieve. They saw the bad and the ugly, and now they're seeing the great. Okay. So you move on from there to a five and five season last year. Tell me about some of the guys who have uh, matriculated out of the program and now on the uh, or in college um, that really helped you guys make that turnaround. Um, from year one to year two. Yes, sir. Well, one of the biggest catalysts, I have to go back to my first year, um, Jermaine Faulkner, who is who is my man, love that kid. Um, he ended up going to, I believe, Brevard. Um, he single-handedly kept us on track that first year. And I know it sounds crazy. In our first year, we went two and eight. Um, we had some really, really good times, um, some really good flashes. And a lot of it was because of the sacrifice Jermaine Faulkner was able to make for us. And then we go into the five and five season and Julian Crawley, you know, comes and, and he's healthy and he plays and he has an outstanding season. He ends up going to Winston-Salem State, does a great job for us. Um, and you just got a host of other guys that that really just – bought in and did everything they could. Another one is Stephon Jones. Stephon Jones is one of my favorite players of all time. And I ain't got no problem with anybody with saying that to anybody simply because when I first, when I first met Stephon Jones, he was coming from PCLA. He was coming from an alternative school. Um, talking about a kid that did not make great decisions. And then he graduated early and he became a captain of the football team. Um, uh, just a, just a great story in Stephon Jones and Davion Marner. Um, fat dollar as we call him. Um, he had a great year as well. And you got a couple of guys that just that just did a really good job on that five from five team. Um, that se that that team as, as seniors, um, they did a really good job. And then, you know, of course, until now, um, with the this year that we have right now with Zacchaeus Moore and Dejon Hodge and Julian Farish, of course, and Elijah Palmer, Scott Gentry. Tony, Duke, I mean, we, we got a, a lot of kids that have put in a lot of hard work and are doing really great things here in person. Yeah. So, speaking of this year, you guys have been putting together a really dominant campaign. I appreciate you. That just came right out of the gates, you know, with just huge wins. Um, huge individual performances, big time um, team wins. Uh, f uh, first two games out the, out the gate, top 60 points. Um, kept the opponent to 20 points in both games. Um, you eclipsed the 60 point uh, mark three times this year. Um, you, you've beaten person's traditional rivals, Northern and Halifax, just just dominated them. Hmm. So we all love to see that. Um, in your wins, average margin of victory is around 45. And that's, that's incredible. 45-point uh, victories uh, you're going out there and getting. Um, and so that really starts, before you get to those great players, that really starts with the staff. Tell me about your coaching staff. We have a coaching staff made entirely of person house person high school in person county um from michael johnson who's my defensive coordinator who played high school football at person high school and went on to methodist to michael is a friend of just love in person absolutely great guy um the quick background story on him he came you know recommended from campbell from campbell um from coach campbell who's no longer here he ended up taking the job in um, lee county um but Justin Campbell, that is. And when I met him, you know, he just, you know, he filling me out. I'm filling him out. Um, and then he, he comes on and, he, you know, he works with it. And then, you know, it's a two and eight year. 
And, and I'm like, I don't know if he's going to stick around. Maybe he don't see the vision. Maybe he don't see it. But he did. He was, no, nah, I want to I wanna do it. And he's been my defensive coordinator. He's been with me ever since. Great guy. Matthew Heflin, who also played person high school, went to Methodist um, University itself, offensive line coach. Um, William Stevens, Trevarian Tapp, uh, Coach Yarborough, Coach Mangum, Coach Tabern. Um, these guys all have played and live and are from born and bred in Person County. And, and the biggest and the biggest thing that I have to say about that is when you, you got guys on that staff that absolutely love our kids, that love our kids, that want what's best for them, that knows the struggles, that knows their families, that knows what they're going through. Um, and they give them everything they got and, and they truly do deeply care, which is how I wanted to build it um, from the first place. Um, and so it started with there. It started with family. It started with love. Um, and then after that, it just branches out into discipline. Right? You know, and so somebody that comes to mind is Coach Yarborough, who you know went to the military. So he understands structure. He understands discipline. He understands the importance of it. Um, and so he brings a unique taste to the to the team and to the staff. And and we just push them. We make sure that they work hard, you know. All right, so let's get to some of those awesome players that you have. Um, let's start with Dejon Hodge. Uh, uh, more than a thousand yards rushing already. Uh, uh, about 146 yards per game. Yes, sir. Uh, I think we're up to 16 rushing touchdowns thereabout. Yes, sir. On the season. Uh, he topped 200 yards rushing in, in the first two games, or I think the first three games. Yes, sir. So just tell us about him. He's a great kid. Um, gets, good, gets, gets good yards on punt contact, um, runs hard. Um, but more importantly, he's a, he's a better kid. As, as, as much of as a good football player as he is, he's a better kid. He's a great guy. Um, very jovial. Loves to play. Loves to have fun. Um, doesn't take life too seriously. When I first met him, he was, you know, coming from the middle schools and, you know, he's one of the better athletes. You can see that. And he was playing quarterback. So he's used to playing quarterback. And, you know, I tell him, you got this new guy telling him, like, man, I think you might want to try out running back. It's like, man, crazy. Um, obviously, you know, me being a former running back, I think I can import, you know, some good knowledge. And slowly but surely, he started to take to me. He started to listen. He started to do everything I asked him to do. And now you're starting to kind of see the fruits of his labor, the fruits of our connection and our bond and, you know, how we communicate on a day to day basis and, and what he needs to see and what he needs to do to get better. And he's having a great year for us, having a great year for us. And he's a big guy, right? He's about six, six, three. Is he's, that he's about six, one, six, two, about six, one, six, two, about two hundred and five. He floats between like two hundred and five and one hundred and ninety five pounds. So right now, probably this late in the season, probably about 195. Um, but he, he squats. I think I got him at 455, 460 pounds his junior year. Um, works, has worked really, really hard in the, in the weight room, just trying to stay healthy, trying to be the best person that he can be, best version of himself that he can be. Um, and, and, yeah, he's a handful on the field, handful. Yeah. And then there's the senior, the kids more. Um, two-way player, uh, started off as uh, at running back at the beginning of the season, six rushing touchdowns in the first game, which was a school record. Yes, sir. On nine um, carries. And so now uh, I think we're up to 11 rushing touchdowns. Sort of uh, started playing him more on the defensive end after a, an ankle injury. Yes, sir. Um, but he did get you a, a rushing touchdown in the last game. Yes, sir. So just tell me about that guy. He's one of our captains. Um, he is one of those guys that embody, you know, what we are trying to do, the culture. He's a culture setter, um, works hard. He's one of those guys that's, that's the value that he brings, especially as a coach, is he's one of those kids you don't have to worry about. You know what he's going to bring every day in practice. You know what he's going to bring every day in the game. He's going to give you everything he got. So mistakes? Yes, everybody going to make mistakes. Um, but he's going to give you maximum effort. And you, those are the ones that you really, really need. Those are your pillars. Those are your guys that set the culture, set the direction of the team. And so as successful as this team has been this year, him, Julian Farish, and some of those other guys, they're the main reason. Yeah. 
So then uh, going from there, just a very interesting stat. Jason Phillips, uh, in the first seven games of the season, he's recorded as having 10 receptions, but five of them were touchdowns. So that's incredible. Yes, sir. To go along with five interceptions on defense. So one of the, another one of those two-way players that's really getting it done on both ends. So tell me about him and, and sort of that this thing you got with having, you know, two-way players that are dominating on both ends. Yes, sir. Well, we, we try to coach them up as best as we can. Um, so they get well-rounded coaching. But the interesting thing about Jason Phillips is this is second year playing football. He didn't play football his freshman and sophomore year. So he he came out his junior year, new, don't know anything, but another kid that immediately fit in with our culture. And just from his upbringing with the Phillips family, they do a great job raising their kids. Um, but he comes in his junior year, he earns a, sp a starting spot at, at safety, and he makes all conference his first year. And... You know, he, he goes into the weight room this offseason. He works really, really hard at his craft. And now you see him kind of dominate on both sides of the ball now. Um, and he's he's a he's a big play machine is, is what he is. He makes a lot of big plays on defense. And when he gets his hands on the offensive side and when he gets his hand on the offense with the ball, I mean, he, he can he's fast. You know, he's, he's really, really fast. And so he's been very explosive for us this year. What was his main sport prior to football? Basketball and baseball. He played basketball and baseball, still plays basketball and baseball, I believe. Um, but those were the two sports that he played his freshman and sophomore year. And I think, you know, some friends on the team decided, just encouraged them and convinced them, like, man, just come out and play, man. You probably love it. And I'm glad they did. <laughs> we're glad to have him, but he's having a great year. Awesome. And then finally, your quarterback, uh, Elijah Palmer. Um, another great stat in, in week seven last week, four passing touchdowns in a single game. So talk about his development. Elijah is a special case um, because when he first got here and I wanted him to play quarterback and he wasn't too happy about that. He wasn't too sure about that. And um, we had our struggles. We definitely bumped heads, um, but it has grown into a great relationship and so now you got him onto his his junior year and you see the growth and the development that he he has made coming from his freshman year to now he's a totally different kid he's a totally different player um and a lot of that goes to you know his upbringing as well and his mother crystal um who's always been a big supporter of the program big supporter of me um so i'm very thankful for her and her family um, but you know, Elijah Palmer has came a long way and that's, those are, those are my touchdowns, you know? And so, you know, I don't score any touchdowns anymore, but when I have a kid and I see him grow and I see him develop, especially coming from where he was at. So now that's the ones I hold up and I say, I did a good job. Um, and Elijah Palmer is definitely in the front. Awesome. All right. So. We talked about those huge wins um, that you guys have been able to accumulate in these uh, first seven, seven, eight weeks of the season. But being a great team is not simply about, you know, dominating. It's also about responding to adversity because there's always adversity at some point in the year. And so you all have three losses on the season now. Um, first loss to Salisbury High School. Uh, which is a team that remains undefeated, is ranked fourth in the state in their division. Um, and there's context to that loss, besides the fact that they are a great team, you guys held them to their lowest scoring output at that point in the season and their second lowest so far. Um, and then the second loss was to Southern Alamance. Um, I think was Zacchaeus Moore was out of that game. Yes, sir. So he didn't even play. That he, you know, main cog was out, um, and you only lost by a touchdown, and that was because of a of a twenty nine point comeback in the fourth quarter, scored twenty nine points in six minutes. Um, so again, there's context there, um, positive context to those two losses. Last night, lost by a touchdown um, after being really competitive, even leading in the game. Um, throughout portions and in the second half. Um, and those, after those first two losses, you guys don't just sit and lick your wounds. You go back out and dominate. 74-0 to zero over Cedar Ridge. 
45 to zero over Orange. Um, and so I, I imagine in your mind, you're thinking, hopefully we can, you know, replicate that next week. But I want to know what inspired you guys to respond the way you responded to those two previous losses. Well, they say a lot of times the team takes on the identity of the coach. And, um, and for me, that's been my life adversity. Um, I don't run from it. I run towards it. I want the challenge. I want the opportunity. Um, and when I get knocked down, I get back up and I come back harder. And that's what they have done. Every single time they have fell short, they come back in on Monday, they're ready to work. Coach, what can I do to get better? Coach, what I do wrong? Can, I, can we try this? Can I do this? Can I do that? Should I have done this? They ask questions. They want to be the best version of themselves. And so I still have no doubt that on, when we come back on Monday, they're going to be ready. They're going to be ready for practice. They're going to be eager to go. They're going to be looking forward to getting that, that bad taste out their mouth and ready to play it on, their, on the game next Friday. Awesome, awesome. So now, looking beyond this great season that you're having, um, as a coach, you're a strong influence in these uh, young men's lives. So what do you desire and expect from them once they leave your program? And uh, what do you preach in the locker room to try to make sure that they have whatever it is they need to be whatever it is you want them to be? I appreciate that question. Um, it's what I do it for. Um, when I told them, when I, when I first got here, when I tell everybody, um, every team that I've been at, I'm not here to win games. Um, I believe winning games is a byproduct of what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I'm here to help them lead better lives, help show them a different way. Um, meaning when a lot of the things that I do is, is life lessons. You know, I went to school to be a social worker. I wanted to help kids. I love football. I just, I was blessed to find a vehicle and an avenue where I could combine both, where I could buy, I can combine my gifts and my passions of, you know, doing, of living in God's will and doing what he wants me to do. And also what I absolutely love. Um, so mentorship, that's what God put me on this earth to do, to help God, to help teach, to help lead. Um, I just can do it through a football avenue and I love it. And so now I don't go to work. I don't go to work no day. You know, I don't I don't ever go to work. Um, I love what I do and I, I have fun doing what I do. Um, but to answer your question. What I expect and what I would like them to take from it is everything that we instill in them, which is love, which is discipline and which is hard work. Um, if you got those three things. You can achieve anything you want to achieve. You know, no, no obstacle, no barrier, no situation will ever be in front of you. That's too big. As long as you remember those things. Um, and they've always took that to heart and they've always grown and, and learned and, you know, and just impact and just talk to me about how much I've impacted them. And I'm internally grateful for that. That's exactly what I do it for. One last question. I meant to ask this earlier, but I do want to get it in. What are your goals personally for coaching? What are your aspirations, not simply at Person High School, but in this life of being a coach or in this football life? What do you one day hope to accomplish? Well, I mean, as, as far as, you know, right here in the, in the short term, for real, um, in the short term right now, it's definitely to win the state championship. Uh, I've, I've never... I've never had anything short of that. And that's just a goal of mine. You know, I just feel like I can get there one day and I believe I, I will. And I know I will. Um, as far as, you know, this 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 coaching thing, as, as I like to say, I'm going to take it as far as it takes me. Um, I'm going to continue to live in God's will. Whatever he got planned for me, I'm going to go. I'm going to go and I'm going to do whatever he asks me to do. Um, if that's, you know, college or a professional 
whatever the case may be, I'm going to go, I'm going to do. Um, but I do know I can, I can be a high school coach for the rest of my life. I absolutely love football. I absolutely love impacting kids. And I know the older I get, the bigger the platform will be, you know, it's always been like that. That's always been what my, my gift was when I was seven. It was five year olds and four year olds that, that followed me around. When I was 10, it was seven year olds. And when I was 14, it was 12 year olds. And when I was 21, it became 14 to 15 year olds. And that's when I started to coach. And the older I got, the more mature I got, the older. And so now it's impacting my coaching staff. It's impacting Michael Johnson on his coaching career and his coaching journey. Um, elevating him from a guy that wasn't valued a lot in the county. And now he's my defensive coordinator. And has done a very good job of it as well. Um, elevating and helping, you know, Matthew Heflin and, and showing him, you know, that is not easy, you know, but at the same time, you know, you can go th go about things the right way and, and be who's just now, you know, married, you know, and just teaching these guys and showing these guys, you know, a, a different way to do things as far as on the coaches, on the coaches level. Um, so, again, for me, man, it's, right now I'm trying to win a state championship. That's always what I wanted to do. Um, as far as the future holds, man, I'm going to go as high as I can possibly go. Awesome. Well, we're just glad to be able to talk to you, Coach Smith. Definitely want you to get a blowout next week. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but more or less, and more than anything, want you to continue to make an impact on our Person County kids and, and lead them as far as as they can go. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.